Hello, so I've got some news here on some new driving test regulations that are starting immediately and this is for anyone taking a driving test from April 2020 onward. Now these rules are designed primarily for key workers taking tests during the months of April and May but these rules may continue beyond those times for all driving tests. Now I've got this official government document here. This is the examiner's operating guide direct from the DVSA and I'll put a link to this in the description below so you can read it for yourself. I'm going to go over how the driving test will be changing for all types of tests. So this will be car drivers, vocational tests, bike tests. Before we go over this I want to say a massive thanks and big respect to the brave examiners that are putting themselves forward to do these driving tests. These examiners are volunteering to do this, they're not being told to do it, they could just stay at home and get paid, but they're choosing to step up and come forward and help everyone during these times. So massive thumbs up and thanks to those examiners. Now let's have a look at what this document says. Now first of all, if you don't know about how to book a driving test at the moment, I'll put a link, um, there are links in this document, but I have done pages on my website I'll link to as well about how to book tests at the moment. So it says, coronavirus, COVID-19, conducting driving tests for key workers. Now this is a document written for examiners, but I'm going to interpret it for you as a, a pupil. So booking a test that we've gone over on a separate video and a separate page on the site. Again, that will be linked in the description. Now, what about actually doing the test? It says extra time will be made for each test. To allow the examiner to take all additional precautions, which we'll talk about soon, as operated, as outlined in the standard operating procedure, extra time will be made for each test. So they are going to have longer between tests. When appointments have been made, the examiner is going to be emailed the details at home and they're being advised to check their emails daily. I'll skip through some of this because it's more for examiners. This is the part you'll want to know, taking the driving test. Examiners must wear suitable clothing that fully covers their arms and legs. Now, it doesn't say that you have to do that as a people, but it may be a good idea if you do. The test will only take place at a DVSA location that has hand washing facilities available. So in my local test centre does. We have um, it's a, you know, public, uh, public toilets with hand wash and whatever. They'll only do tests where there are facilities available. There are many test centres, including one by me, where there's no toilets, no hand washing facilities at all. So those test centres will not be open for tests. Um, again, it says the examiner should wash their hands before leaving the office and entering the public waiting area. You will probably be asked to do the same or expected to do the same, so be prepared to wash your hands when you turn up at the test centre. The examiner should wear gloves as soon as their hands have been washed, so the examiners will be wearing gloves for the tests. They're also being told not to touch their faces. They may well advise you as well not to touch your face during the driving test. It's very hard to do that because it's a natural thing to want to touch your face. Now, it says where, this is an important part, where necessary, the examiner must politely remind the accompanying driver, that's me, your instructor, of the requirement for social distancing. So in other words, they're not allowing uh, you to go on tests with pupils. They're not allowing me to go on tests with pupils. So I'm trying to talk as though you're an examiner, a pupil and an instructor all at the same time. <laughs> So yeah, I can't go on a test with you and your accompanying driver can't go on a test with you. It will just be you and the examiner. And you may know that sometimes you have two examiners where one assesses the other. That won't be done. It doesn't say that in here, but that won't be done during these times. You'll only have one examiner. Examiners must not shake the candidate's hand. They don't normally do that anyway, but you mustn't put your hand out to shake the hand or anything like that. This way it gets quite, um, quite detailed. Examiners must not let the candidate touch the iPad, stylus or the paper test sheet. Now, all of the, well, as far as I know, all of the test centres are now using tablets to mark the driving test. 
but they won't let you touch the tablet again. You wouldn't normally, but they're not going to let you touch the tablet to sign it. So the way you sign for your test is you'll be asked to take along your own pen and paper. And if you don't do that, they'll provide you with the pen and paper. But they're going to ask you to sign your name on a piece of paper. They'll then look at the piece of paper and compare it to the signature on your driving test. If it matches, the examiner will put a letter X on the marking sheet, on the tablet or on the paper sheet. So they're effectively signing for you. You must then destroy that piece of paper or take it with you. You cannot leave that piece of paper and pen in the test centre. They won't let you. You have to take it with you and dispose of it yourself safely. Now it says you still have to confirm your email address because most test results are emailed now. Um, you can change the email by writing it on a piece of paper if you want to change it, but you probably don't need to. Um, the test will be unaccompanied, as we've already said. They won't allow people to go with you on the test sitting in the back of the car, because I've been on about four, 500 driving tests sitting in the back of the car, but I'm not doing that at the moment. Uh, the examiner will explain the de the debrief will be offered, so they will explain the results of the test, but your instructor cannot be present for that. It says on here, um, they, won't be they won't be invited to listen in. You probably can if you stand far enough back from the car, but they won't ask you to get in the car, as they often do. Very important this, if you turn up for a test and you have clear symptoms, the test will not go ahead. If you're coughing or you look you look ill or you you know you've got a temperature or anything like that, if they think you are ill, they won't do the test. And also, if during the test you start coughing, they can cancel the test if they think you are unwell. Quite awkward that because it's quite natural to cough during a driving test. You know, people get nervous and want to you know cough and sneeze and whatever. Um, but you've got to refrain from coughing. Um, as much as you can on the driving test. Both the driver's side and passenger side windows must be open. You must have the windows down for ventilation. And the test will be conducted as normal as it says. So it's still the same test in terms of sat nav and you know you're gonna do the same thing, the same routes, whatever, but just with those differences. Now let's move on to guidance for vocational tests. And if you are a car driver, please keep watching because there are points in here you may find interesting or you might there is a point in a moment that affects car drivers which I want to talk about and get your opinion on. So vocational tests are for things like lorries, buses, if you're going to drive for a living. The reversing exercise and uncouple couple exercise must be done at the start of the test. So some tests you have to put a trailer on the back of your vehicle to show that you can reverse with a trailer and that kind of thing. That must be done at the start of the test. If you fail the test, this is interesting and this is the part I was talking about that I want to get your opinion on. If the candidate gets a serious fault for the exercises at the beginning, the manoeuvres at the beginning, the test will be terminated in the interest of public safety using activi activity code 4. So that's quite interesting on a, a car test. If you do a manoeuvre and fail at the beginning, during these times, you will still continue the driving test. Whereas for some tests, they're saying you failed, it's not worth taking the risk of doing the rest of the test. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments. Do you think the normal L test should be stopped at the beginning just in these times if you fail straight away? Um, so that's all for vocational tests, very similar to the car test. Motorcycle tests, Mod 1 and Mod 2. So if you don't know about this, Module 1, known as Mod 1 and Mod 2. Module 1 is where you do an off-road element for your bike test. Like you've probably seen cyclists driving between, riding between cones in a car park, that kind of thing. Module 2 is when you go out on the road and do your practical driving. Now I'm not an expert on bike tests, so I'm just going to read what it says. Signing and kitting up of candidates, completing end of test paperwork and debriefs should be carried out either in the general waiting room or outside. The bike kitting up room is too small to allow for social distancing. Start of the test. 
fitting the Bluetooth device because cyclists have to have a Bluetooth earpiece in so the examiner can talk to them because of course on a bike you can't be, be shouting at each other. I've got a funny story about that I could tell you one day when um, <laughs> I might as well tell you the story now actually. Um, a pupil I taught to drive went on a bike test and the examiner accidentally left his um, his earpiece or his microphone on when he shouldn't have and the pupil could hear the examiner giving his choice opinion on the pupil's writing. I'll leave it up to you to decide what you think he was saying. So anyway, uh, where, where were we? Pairing the device, the candidate must fit their own earpiece which will be provided by the examiner. This will be an unused earpiece. If the candidate has their own earpiece compatible with our Bluetooth device, it is acceptable for them to use it. So you can take your own earpiece or you can use theirs, but if they give you one, that will be an unused one for hygiene reasons. If the examiner has any Bluetooth issues during the test, they should talk the candidate through switching it off and back on again to reset it. Once the test... Uh, so a bit of a, there's a typo there. Now, once the test has started, the examiner should not handle any of the radio equipment. End of the test. The examiner should wear a pair of gloves provided by the DVSA and ask the candidate to remove their earpiece. Once removed, the examiner should dispose of the earpiece along with their gloves. The guidance further on in the document relating to dis disposing of PPE, we'll come to that soon. Uh, mod 1 tests only, sign the candidate up, you following the advice above, make sure the government rules for social distancing are followed um, for each individual MMA exercise. Not sure what MMA is, mixed martial arts, I don't know, if you're a cyclist let me know, I'm not an expert on bikes, I wouldn't even know how to turn a bike on, I'd probably get on backwards, upside down. I oh, don't know anything about bikes at all. At the end of the test, if the candidate has passed, the examiner should read the health declaration to candidate and ask if the statement is true. If the candidate agrees, the examiner should mark a cross X in the signature box on the tablet, like on the other tests we spoke about, to say that you've agreed. The examiner should take the candidate's license in the usual way for ADLI issue ensuring it's only handled with gloves on. The tablet and wallet should be closed before the examiner handles the license. This avoids the tablet becoming contaminated. When the examiner returns to the office, they must shred the license. If you don't know, examiners shred your driving license, your provisional, after you've passed. Dispose of their gloves, wash their hands. A new pair of gloves should be used for each test. Um, if the test was conducted on the app, then all write-ups should be done using the voice-to-text function. Not sure what that is. If the examiner is a non-iPad user or conducting the paper, they complete the paper form. They post it off. Um, at the moment, there remains sufficient traffic, traffic on our roads to ensure meaningful tests can be conducted. Very important that they're saying that the roads are sufficiently busy to conduct tests, so it's not too quiet. If you think it's going to be easy, Please don't do that. Please do not go and book a driving test thinking, I'll oh, pretend I'm a key worker and I'll get an easy test on quiet roads. Don't do that. That's very disrespectful to everyone who is a key worker and they will check anyway. And um, it's disrespectful to the examiners who are taking the risk of doing these tests. Finally, disposing of PPE, protect personal protective equipment such as gloves and antiviral wipes must be disposed of separately to general waste. PPE must be disposed of and double bagged daily. At the end of the day, the bag must be clearly marked by taping on a note showing the date it can be collected or destroyed. Collection or destruction must be at least 72 hours after the items were disposed of. So there you go, that's the examiner's operating guides for the driving test at the moment. So if you want to keep up to date with all that's going on, it's best to follow me on YouTube to subscribe. I do updates here very often, especially on my community tab, which is like a text, it's like a Facebook wall. I update on there almost daily, sometimes twice a day at the moment. You can also go on firstdrive.com forward slash blog, or if you just go on firstdrive.com, 
there is a, a thing in the menu saying news and I'm updating that. I've recently spent the last two or three weeks completely changing my website, updating the menus, making sure it's better on mobiles so everyone can access this information. So thanks for watching. Check out the videos on the screen now to see what I'm doing. You can watch some driving tests or there'll be a random video in the bottom right corner. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon for more videos.